start with, here is a royal patient, and this is a typical presentation. This patient was a male of 40 with a testicular mass. His LDH was 691, which is somewhat higher than the upper end of the normal range, which cuts off at 450. Serum AFP and BTRHCG are normal. This is the gross appearance of his testicular mass. The cut surface has a firm, pale appearance and is slightly nodular. The testis was sampled, assuming it to be a tumour. The age of the patient and the raised LDH to me suggested the possibility of a seminoma. On microscopy, the interstitium of the testis was rather fibrous, with fibrosis of seminiferous tubules. And here is a higher power showing inflammation of the seminiferous tubules and at an even higher power, you can see amongst the inflammatory cells some multinucleate giant cells. Because I was initially worried about the possibility of seminoma, the reti was well sampled, and this just shows inflammation with the presence of a granuloma nearby. This is the epididymis, and you can see polymorphs in the tubules indicating active inflammation. Despite taking extra blocks, there was no evidence of tumour, just more of the same type of inflammation, and here is a very nice example of a granuloma. So a diagnosis of granulomatous orchitis was made. Interestingly, it turns out that this patient had been treated by antibiotics a number of months earlier for orchitis. Granulomatous orchitis usually presents between the ages of 40 and 60. The presenting symptom is usually a testicular mass. Occasionally there may be fever. In most cases there is history of trauma to the scrotum and in two-thirds of cases a history of a urinary tract infection. The differential diagnosis includes bacterial, spirochete, fungal and viral infections of the testis, tuberculosis, sarcoid and seminoma with granulomatous inflammation. Grossly as we saw earlier the testis is usually enlarged with a firm and nodular cut surface and histologically there is infiltration of seminiferous tubules by lymphocytes and plasma cells with giant cells and there is also interstitial and tubular fibrosis.